Good afternoon and welcome back to Today with Matt and Dave. I'm Matt Ricker. And I'm Dave Horvath. And this is our eighth show. It's uh, Thursday, uh, uh, I was about to say September, <laughs> October 22nd, 2015. Uh, can't believe it's the end of October. Next week we'll be uh, talking about Halloween. I can't believe it. I know it. it'll be a spooky episode. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, as we said uh, when we first opened... Uh, this is a special show. We're going to be bringing in a special guest, uh, so uh, we will uh, keep her. you. Yeah, we'll keep you updated, and we'll uh, we'll let you know when she comes on. Okay, so I'm going to take over, Matt, with a little bit of school sports. Last week, uh, Gales didn't do too bad overall. Honestly, we did a very good week. Honestly, sports for the Gales this past weekend, but uh, women's cross country. Came in 35th out of 36 last Friday at the Wisconsin Adidas Invitational. So, not the best finish. Uh, ladies, I hope you can work a little better and do well cross country, please. And then the men's cross country did a little bit better. They came in 5th out of 36 at the Wisconsin Adidas Invitational. That 5th place finish, though, did drop them in the national rankings now. They're now ninth in the nation instead of 8th. So, it's they came in 5th, but they were expected to do better. So, I know they got another meet coming up soon. I think it's next week they got one. So, they'll, they'll do better. Moving on to volleyball. Volleyball had a nice little weekend. They won 3 nothing, three sets to 0 versus Quinnipiac on Saturday on homecoming. So, good win for them. And then won 3 sets to 2 sets on Sunday against Fairfield. So, nice little double win for volleyball. They've been playing well lately. I think they've won four of the last five. They're really starting to make strides, which is nice to see after they're struggling so much in the beginning of the year. So, women's soccer lost a tough one nothing loss on homecoming to Siena. It was, it was, I watched that game. It was tough. It was the own goal. So, yeah. But then they won. They, they did make up for it. They did win 5-1 yesterday against St. Peter's, but at the cost of losing one of their starters, she broke her tibia. So, yeah. So, uh... Erica, I hope you get better because that did not look very good. Um, so it was nice to have them to win. Men's soccer, been on a roll. Now they've won five straight games. They won 2 nothing against Siena on the 17th, and then they won 2-1 to one versus St. Peter's yesterday. So won five in a row. They got, I think it's one or two games left before they go off to max, and they're playing good. That's what you want to see going into championship time. You want to want to be playing well. Moving on now. Rowing didn't have anything this past weekend, and golf uh, has not yet sent in the stats from their last shootout, the Glenwood shootout, shootout, so I'll have to wait and see about that. But Water Polo lost a tough 11-10 to matchup last night against their arch rivals, Fordham. So I know we beat them last time we played. It was 12-11 to us. They beat us 11-10 last night. It was a really, really tough game from, from the re- reading on it. But some nice news on homecoming, like most of our teams, men's <laughs> rugby Beat the number one team in the conference and number four in America, Army, 43 to 26. Only Thanks. now biggest win in program history. Obviously, at the point I interviewed some of the yeah. guys actually after the fact and really talked to them, it was just surreal. They said, and and it in the country has taken notice because now they we are ranked 13th in the nation, which is pretty awesome to say coming from a school that rugby's only been around for a short period of time here and. Now we're number 13 in the nation. Pretty pretty amazing how far we've come. And uh, actually moving on to this upcoming week with sports. Men's soccer will be playing at Quinnipiac. Or, yes, at Quinnipiac on Saturday, October 24th. And then uh, home against Manhattan. No, what's a Jasper? On Wednesday, October 28th at 1 o'clock. So come out and support. Rowing will be at the head of the Skull Kill on Saturday, October 24th at 10 a.m. So anyone who wants to go out to rowing, definitely go out and see it. Volleyball will be playing against Canisius on Saturday, October 24th, and Niagara on Sunday, October 25th. They're going to be up away, so have fun on that nice eight-hour eight hour bus ride, ladies. Women's swimming, and, <laughs> women's swimming and diving will be at a quad meet this, for this weekend. They'll be playing at Sacred Heart, St. Francis, Brooklyn, and Wagner. So good luck to the ladies. Let's get a nice win out of that. Wow, they'll be uh, all over the place. All over. They're all, I think it's the start time is 11.30 a.m., but they have to be there at like 9. So it's going to be a fun-filled day of swimming. Women's soccer will be home against Quinnipiac on Saturday, October 24th at 2 o'clock, and then we'll be away at Manhattan on Wednesday, October 28th. Women will also be, women's rowing will also be at the head of the Skull Kill on Saturday, October 24th at 10. So then again, anyone, anyone who wants to go watch some nice rowing, just go over and uh, head over and watch it. Men's water polo will be at the CWPA crossover. They'll be playing against Mercyhurst State, 
uh, Mercy Earth Day. Mercy Earth <laughs> at Saturday, on Saturday, October 24th at 9.30 a.m., then against Salem at 12.30 p.m., and at George Was- uh, versus George Washington at 5.30 p.m. And then they'll be playing in St. Francis, Brooklyn on Wednesday, October 28th at 7.30 and finally, men swimming and diving will be playing against St. Francis Brooklyn at 9 a.m. is when the start time is 11. The swimming starts at 11.30 on Saturday, October 24th at home. So if you want to go watch uh, some men swimming, I know they've, they've played well so far this year. They've, they're have 2-0 th- so through the uh, first couple of games of the year. So definitely go uh, go support them. And that's really it for the sco- uh, high school, high school, college sports. <laughs> I don't know what's wrong with me today, but uh, <laughs> moving on, we're going to really go through the bo- Billboard Top 10 kind of quick. Number one, The Hills by The Weeknd. Number uh, two, my first guess. <laughs> first guess. Hotline Bling by Drake. Number three, What Do You Mean by Justin Bieber. Number four, Watch Me by Salento. Number five, 679 by Fetty Wap featuring Remy Boy. It's kind of funny. Why is six afraid of seven? Seven, eight, nine. <laughs> Number six, I Can't Feel My Face by The Weeknd. Number eight, Locked Away by R City featuring Adam Levine. Number nine, Stitches by Sean Mendez. Number 10, Wildest Dreams by Taylor Swift. And number or number nine, why well, I skipped eight. Eight is Stitches, nine is Good For You, and 10 is, uh, I'm all over the place today. Nine is Wildest Dreams by Taylor Swift. 10 is Good For You by Selena Gomez featuring ASAP Rocky. And number one song of this year, uh, this today of this last year, Matt, all about the bass. Yes, it's all about the bass by Megan Trainor. <laughs> you know, you know, when I was thinking about that, that 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 was a very popular song. Exactly. Like, you could not stop hearing it on the radio. I remember before I came to college last year, <laughs> I had to be in July, mm-hmm. and I remember it was just starting to play on the radio, like kind of yeah. frequently, instead of mm-hmm. just being played like once every, like you know, maybe once an hour or once every two hours. It was like you know, two times an hour. Two to three times every two hours, and I remember my sister's like, "Oh, this song's gonna blow up." And I'm like, "You know, it's kind of catchy." Mm-hmm. And we were eight weeks in, Matt, and it's been number one song for these last eight weeks. I know that, and I'm yeah. pretty sure it's gonna be number one for at least a couple more. So it's kind of nuts. And actually, uh, talking about Megan Trainer, it's kind of funny because um, you know she's doing fantastic. I know she's supposedly have to have an album come out sooner than later, but talking about album releases, Logic's album, The Incredible True Story, comes out on November 13th. So I don't even listen to Logic. He's, I enjoy him. He's a very good rapper. I'm excited to see this come out. There's actually a lot of really good albums going to come out in the next um, couple of weeks. I can tell you. I know Bieber has an album coming out. We'll talk about those in the future, but there's some really good ones coming out. And finally, I'm going to end off with the box office, like we uh, always do. Goosebumps came in at first place by Sony, made $23 million. Shocked me. Did not think it was in the top five, honestly. I didn't think it looked good at all got okay reviews but just it's a, it was a weak weekend looking at top number two was the martian dropped 42 percent to 21 million number three was bridge of spies the movie by uh with tom hanks and directed by steven spielberg it's gonna hold up well it got an a score it's not gonna make as much as some of his other films with tom hanks but it's gonna do well just because of tom hanks and steven spielberg and they both know what they're doing and it looks really good. It's more of an adult pop, adult-oriented movie. We'll see. I think it'll get some nominations just because it's a Steven Spielberg film. And every one of those are fantastic. Number four was Crimson Peak by Universal at 12, 13 million. Bombed. I thought that was going to make a lot more money coming into the weekend. It's a well, Neil Halloween. It's a scary movie. I thought, mm-hmm. and it failed pretty bad. And number five was Hotel Transylvania 2 by Sony. It made 12.6 million, dropped 38 percent. My, I mean, my projections were pretty off. I said Martian, Cringe and Spreak, Bridge of Spies, Hotel Transylvania, and Pan. Pan didn't make it. And everything else was dropped down one. So, I mean, it, was, it wasn't it was terrible, but Goosebumps did not expect. Now, this week, a couple opening, openings. The Last Witch Hunter with Vin Diesel. It's that movie about the... He's, he fights witches. He's been alive for eternity. That opens in over 3,000 theaters. Rock the Kabash with um, Bill Murray opens in over 2,000 theaters. Steve Jobs, the film with... Featuring Michael Fassbender, Seth mm-hmm. Rogen. That movie is now opening in 2,491 theaters. So it's getting a big release because it's done very well so far. Suffragette, which is the movie about the whole women's suffrage movement in England. Meryl Street's in it because Meryl Street can do anything she wants because she's fantastic. She stars. That is opening in four theaters. Kind of want to see how that does because it's interesting to see that does well. And Paranormal Activity, The Ghost Dimension, opens nationwide. So, you know, for this week, looking at projection-wise... I think The Last Witch Hunter, it looks really good. I like Vin Diesel. Vin Diesel's been doing hot lately in his films. He was in Guardians of the Galaxy. He was in Fast and the Furious, the newest one. Mm-hmm. 
guy's a hot topic. He's going to bring people to see it. I think that's going to come in first. I think the Martian's going to jump, keep second. I think Goosebumps going to drop to third. I think it may, may get toppled by Paranormal Activity. It's kind of a, you know, the last Paranormal Activity opened at 18 million. So can this one open to the same number? I don't know. We're really, I mean, we're a week away from Halloween. This is, the, and people like this kind of stuff. So <laughs> I think this one maybe will be third instead of fourth. I have it as fourth right now, but it could always change. You don't know how the weekends go. And then number five is, I think Bridge of Spy is going to hold it. But a film I did put down, I think that could jump and really shake things up is the Steve Jobs film. It's done through the small, through 60 yeah. theaters, it's made a lot of money. It's really, really popular. They're saying it's fantastic. It's going to have a lot of nominations. It could jump and get my top five easily, but I just, who knows? The way some of these films have done lately in the box office, they've fluctuated and they just haven't made what they're supposed to do. So we'll have to see. But any comments on that, Matt? No, I mean, uh, that that sounds uh, like good projections, you know. Um, ho- maybe those uh, Halloween, the Halloween movie will, will uh, you know, make it up there. But yeah. I'll have to uh, just kind of wait and see. Yeah, we'll have to uh, update you next week on uh, what, what made it up there so. oh yeah so uh we're actually gonna take a short break and when we come back we will be introducing our special guest today sounds good we'll be right back after these messages